Now, folks, listen. Yahweh is all that exists. That's all there is. Now, why are you arguing around about this and that and the other and Moses and Joshua and all them kind of all these kind of names that you You see? Yahweh is all that does exist. You want to get the argument set. Mm -hmm. Now, look. Yahweh is pure spirit. That's Yahweh. Now that's the Bible. That's the ultimate source. That's the stuff. That's the limits. That's the boundaries. That's the sum total. Amen. Now, Yahweh took on an incorporeal form. See? It's called that his Lord. But it's still Yahweh. Right. Right. Yes. See? Then Yahweh, see, created the heavens and earth, or Elohim. See. Now, a Lord is a title. God is a title. See? Now, you listen to what I'm saying. Get these words straight together. And I hope you're benefited by what I'm saying. See? Now, he's all of the substance he did. There isn't anything else. Well, somebody said, well, where did he come from? See, you get too damn stupid. Do you understand what I'm telling you? That he's the ultimate source and emanated everything. And if you understood what I'm talking about, you wouldn't be asking no food questions like that. Am I getting somewhere? Yes. <laughs> Now listen, now he comes on down here in the person of Joshua. See? That's still Yahweh manifested in a physical body. Right. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I want to make myself clear. All this jib-jabbing and fooling around and squabbling around about first one thing and another. You say, talking about what you believe and what you don't believe. What is the reason why you don't know? You don't know nothing about it. That's right. You say, well, why don't you know something about it? Because you haven't had nobody to tell you. Then every time somebody tries to tell you something, that Yahweh has sent. Right. Right. You know what you do then? Persecute him and put him to death. Right. Right. But you did that the last time. <laughs> that has already told us. <laughs> See? Now listen. Yahshua the Messiah, whom you call Jesus, those of you that don't know no better, of course that's not his name. See, let me tell you who that was. Now that was Yahweh manifested in a physical body. You understand that? Yes.
I would like to say good morning to the class. My name is Felicia Hamilton and I will be your moderator for this session. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Southfield, Michigan class. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Southfield, Michigan class was established in 1997. The dean of the Southfield, Michigan class is Dr. Marvin Lewis. The president is Dr. Edward Ewell. And the vice president is Dr. Ronald Atkins. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Greek language, the Hebrew language, nor the Latin language had any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1,400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. Excuse me. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Joshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given into salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, 
What was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary aims and constitutional objectives of the class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to encourage and, no. Third, to extirpate current superstitions to investigate the unexplained spirit law, thank you, and so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstitions, skepticisms, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now, in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state, our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. At this time, we would like to have the class dedicated in prayer by our vice president, Dr. Ronald Atkins, followed by scripture, which will be Romans, the 12th chapter, read by Dr. Lauren Lewis. May we all bow our hearts and minds in a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father Yahweh, thank you once again for allowing us to be here. Um, you know, it's, it's not customary for us to be here. We got to be thankful that we are here. We want to thank you so much for your mercy and your grace. And also want to thank you for my wife's 64th birthday today. <laughs> She's going to kill me. But we're so happy to be here. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. All these things we ask in your son's name. Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah.
I'd like to say good morning to the class. Good morning. And I'll be reading out of the King James Version, substituting the true names where appropriate. That's Romans, the 12th chapter. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as Yahweh hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in the Messiah, and every one member one of another, having the gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothfulness in business, fervent in spirit, serving Yahweh. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessities of the sons given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith Yahweh. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That was Romans, the 12th chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like to once again say good morning to everyone. Morning. And thank you for joining us today for um, live and in, in person in person and on YouTube. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone to please silence all electronic devices so that we're, the class is not disturbed. And I do have one announcement that I will be reading throughout the class as we have uh, people come in. Uh, we will have a business meeting directly after doxology. We only have the room until 2 p.m., so we're asking all the Southfield members to remain seated. If those that uh, must leave or visitors, please leave promptly after doxology. So uh, we will have our business meeting directly after the doxology is read. And for our first speaker, we're happy to have our president, Dr. Edward Ewell.
I'd like to say good morning to the class and any visiting members. Um, this is a school, it's not a church. And I've been coming down here for over 30 years and uh, before coming here, I used to be a Baptist member in a Baptist church. Two I really belong to, Davidson Avenue Baptist Church where they have their 100th year anniversary right now and then Corinthian Baptist Church, which borders Hamtramck and Detroit, Kniff and DeQuinder. And all the years in there, those churches, that was most of my life. I was over 40 when I left out of the church seeking the truth. And coming into this teaching, I found the truth beyond a doubt because everything that is taught is a result of a divine vision and revelation given into the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in 1931. And since that time, nobody has been able to say, you were wrong, Dr. Kinley, because he had a divine vision and a revelation showing the world what was going on with religious dogma, because uh, in the world, there's many religions, like many gods. There have been many ruling kingdoms from day one up until now, and all them kingdoms have been wrong in worshiping. They worship things of stone, rocks, wood, animals. In other words, they consider them their gods, but we know that there's only one true god who is not a title, but he has a name and a title, and he was manifested in the flesh. flesh. So uh, somebody start out, I want uh, something from Isaiah, Isaiah 42, 11, 45, and four to six, and Isaiah 45, then drop to the last three verses in Isaiah 45, and then go to, Isaiah 46, and read all the way up to 11, 46, 5 through 11. Now, starting out with Isaiah 42 and 11, we have up here on this name chart, if one of the readers would begin to read. Isaiah 42 and 8. 8, rather, I'm sorry. I am Yahweh, that is my name. See that? That's a name. It's not a title like Lord or Jehovah, which they try to make these two become the Tetragrammaton, but every dictionary ever been written showed that the Tetragrammaton is Y-H-W-H, -H, which can't be announced in that form, so you had to put um, vowels in, first vowel for Adam, second vowel for Eve, which makes the name Yahweh. Right. And Yahweh is spirit, pure spirit, He's incomprehensible, inscrutable, can't be discerned by physical senses. So he had to move to this shape and form as Elohim. So read that again. I am Yahweh. I am Yahweh, that is my name. I am Yahweh, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. And my glory I will not give to Lord God or Jesus Christ. Ain't that right? Okay, so that's Yahweh. In other words, and he cannot be seen with the naked eye. So he moved into this form, Elohim. So pick up the 45 and start at 4. That's Isaiah 45 and 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect. Okay, so he, a lot of people believe that the land of Israel now is the same as it was when this was spoken. But it's not. It's been many kingdoms, many, many kingdoms. The Ottoman kingdom ruled that for 800 years, all that area. They call it Palestine. Now they want to call it Israel. And Israel, when they went up and conquered the Canaanites, they named the names of all of the areas after the 12 sons, or really 11, and Joseph's two sons. That was the name of Manasseh, Ephraim, which is Samaria, all those were Israelites, and they were kingdoms. They were all kicked out 
all the way up until 1948. That's a long story. Me and Marvin always discuss that all the time in the history because he, like me, is a history buff and knows stuff about who was who and when they occurred. So keep reading what you have to Tron. For, for Jacob my servant's sake and Israel mine elect, mm -hmm. I have called thee by thy name. So he's calling them by name. Okay, read. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Mm -hmm. I am Yahweh, and I, there is none else. There again, no one, no other name, and there's none else. Okay, drop down to uh, uh, the last five verses. I think around either 35 or 30 in the uh, same chapter. Of 45? Yes, uh-huh. All right. The last five verses, so 19? Yes. Yeah, okay. start there. I have, I have not spoken in secret in a dark place. So like earth. he's revealing himself. In other words, he's not hiding himself. Read. I have not spoken in a secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob. Mm -hmm. Seek ye me in vain. I, Yahweh, speak righteousness. See, he's I, righteous. Read. I declare things that are right. He declared things that are right. In other words, there's two spirits in operation that righteous and unrighteous. Spirit of righteousness, spirit of iniquity. Those in operation right now everywhere. Read. Assemble yourselves and come draw near together, mm -hmm. ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of the graven image and pray unto it. You see God. that they got wood that's worshiping wood. Dagon and all them stone deities. They believe that mess. Read. And pray unto a deity they cannot see, they, can, that cannot see. They can't talk, just looking at it. They put them in temples, too. One of them is a great story in Gaza where Samson was there and he killed like 6,000 people in Gaza, right along the Gaza Strip where they're fighting right now killing all those Philistines that worship Dagon. That was a god of stone. But read. Mm -hmm. Tell ye and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together, who have declared this from ancient time. Now this has been declared from ancient times. Who have told it from that time, have not Yahweh, and there is no El else beside me. So in other words, there's no... Elohim besides him. That's like here we got Elohim, which is his divine title, or this is Yahweh moving from inscrutability to where you can be seen in visions and revelations. He's the one that showed Moses how everything was made. In other words, Moses saw from beginning to end, and John on the Isle of Patmos saw from end back to the beginning. Those two archangels are type two archangels like Michael and Gabriel, so read. A just L and a savior. He's a just L in this shape and form, archetype, original pattern, and then he's a savior in physical and in physical form as Joshua the Messiah we have up there. That's our savior, there's none else, there's no other name under heaven where you can be saved, saving the Joshua Messiah who is the deliverer. Read. There is none beside me. Nobody but nothing beside him. Look unto me and be ye saved. Now you got to look unto him. You can't look outside of him to be saved. In other words, look at him who Savior is in his name. Yahweh is salvation. Read. All the ends of the earth, for I am Yahweh and there is none There's else. just nothing else other than Yahweh. We even breathe that Yahweh. <sighs> We can't help ourselves. I believe in Buddha, but you breathe it. I believe in Allah. In other words, there's none else other than our Savior, Yahshua Messiah, who is Yahweh in physical, spiritual form. Now get over there in 46 uh, 9, but start at 5, 46 5. Isaiah 46 and 5. Mm hmm. To whom will ye liken me and now, make me equal? Now, who are you going to liken him to? You're going to have him look like 
this boy of darkness who's the father of lies, you know, he's a murderer. So who's murdering now? In other words, in our present day, right now, there are murderers all over the world killing each other, killing innocents. So look at them. They're not like this one on this side. Read this one more time. To whom will ye liken me and make me equal? You're going to be on the father's side of Yahweh, or you're going to be on the father of lies? Read. And compare me that, that, excuse me, that we may be like. They lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver in the balance. Yeah, like all that shine ain't gold. You know, I'll just give you a little parable on that from my days growing up. I used to shoot pool, and I cleaned the pool room, and they let me shoot all the eight tables free. So um, when a person have a ball sitting in the pocket, which you could shoot blindfold, there was a guy named Chip Shop had a big voice. He'd say, all that shine ain't gold. And he'd say that, and people would miss that easy shot. So in other words, Everything shine ain't gold. In other words, it's just something on the outside. In other words, it looked good. And this boy was decked out throughout all the scriptures that talk about him. You know, he was a shining light. In other words, you couldn't, oh, you know, he's spirit too. But he come and manifest in that shiny stuff that people like on the outside, but they don't look at the inside. In other words, it's righteousness, spiritual bride, Sabbath, shepherd banner, provider, healer, and righteousness. He's the host of all those things because he's Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. These three are one. Read. Sixth verse. They lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver in the balance mm -hmm. and hire a goldsmith and he make it, it a god. They fall you down. Hear that? Do you hear that? They're making gods out of gold. And we're still doing it. Golden crosses. Read. Mm -hmm. They fall down, yea, they worship. They bear him upon the shoulders. They carry him and set him in his place. And he standeth. From his place shall he not remove. Yes, in all these kingdoms, Babylon, Medes and Persian, Greece, Roman Empire, they all did what she just read. In other words, when they would go in and tear down other kingdoms, they take all of their gold, all their silver, their animals, in other words, and kill all the men and all the rest of the men they didn't kill. They made them slaves and took the women and integrated with them, create new offsprings. That's been the kingdom of the world. Again, the Medes and Persians, Greeks, Roman Empire, Papal and Pagan Rome. And those Roman popes telling all those lies and have deceived the world with one J. Jesus. Okay, keep reading, Lord. Mm -hmm. Remember this and show yourselves. Men, bring it again to mind, oh, you transgressors. Mm -hmm. Remember the former things of old. Now, these are the former things of old. And then in 1 Corinthians 10, chapter say, <clears throat> use those as uh, ammunition, in other words, against that satanic spirit. Read. Remember the former things of old. For I am Yahweh, and there is none There's else. There's none else. I am Yahweh, and there is none like none me. None like Yahweh. Declaring the end from the beginning. He declared the end from the beginning, so that means he has a purpose, a pattern, and plan and operation right now. All the way from the beginning. Read. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times. The things that are not yet the done. The things that are not yet done. In other words, he's got us right now in this present kingdom age. And it's a spiritual age. No longer worshiping physically like they did for some 1,500 years under the uh, law of Moses. In other words, all that's done, what he fulfilled it. In other words, the promise was fulfilled and brought us into this new kingdom on earth. And the next age is of immortality. So we have to shake off these physical bodies to enter into that. In other words, there are ages to come. So be thankful that you're in this divine teaching and know the things that are clearly seen. In other words, these things are written 
and then there, you can read them. In other words, a, word, a picture is worth a thousand words. So take this divine vision and use it in your heart and mind. And uh, thank Yahshua for everything that we have, because he's the only one that can give. And I'll be certain that there's nothing else in my life, the remaining days I have, that I want to worship other than Yahshua the Messiah. Right. So with those two words, I'd like to thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yu. We really enjoyed that. And before I, I announce our next speaker, we'd like to once again let everyone know we will have a business meeting directly after uh, doxology today. Our class, um, we can only be in here until 2 o'clock, so we're asking all Southfield class members to remain seated after do doxology so we can get um, ahead with the business of having our business meeting. And for our next speaker, we're happy to call Dr. April Lewis. Good morning, class. Good morning. Oh, it's um, really good to be here. I really enjoyed the previous speaker. Um, oh, nervous this morning. I'm so happy to see my parents in the audience. Got some things to say, so let me calm down, <clears throat> get myself together. Um, like the first speaker said, this is a product of a divine vision and revelation that was given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, um, in 1931. And um, one of the things that he said that really captivated me, my first class, I actually remember who spoke and I actually remember who spoke to me after class. My very first class, um, Dr. Edward Yule said to me, this was maybe 11 years ago. He said to, um, first do your research. And this is a research organization. And he said to, Make this thing be proven to you beyond a shadow of a doubt. My now mother-in-law said to me, she wasn't my mother-in-law then, but she came up to me and she said, um, now whoever you believe in, I was a Baptist Christian. Didn't know nothing about that religion until I came to class. <laughs> Didn't know nothing about it. But she said to me, whoever you believe in today, not, Mom, you may not even remember this. <laughs> she said, whoever you believe in today, you ask your creator if everything you heard in this school was true. I said, I'm going to try that one. <laughs> That's what I'll try that. So about three, I, I said that. I said, OK, I'm trying this. I'm going to see if this is going to work. <laughs> so about three months after that now, that was class on a Sunday, that very, that Monday, and I've told this story before. That Monday, Yahshua allowed me to go to the library. I went to the library for months, picked up my baby from daycare, got her situated, got my books. I did this, I did this for months. And so about three months after that, Haley, she's three years old, she's 14 now, but she says, Mommy, <laughs> she said, God is in my heart. I said, yeah, because she went to the daycare at the church. I said, yes, he is. So I'm reading the pamphlet. I'm bedtime, Haley, go to bed. She says, Mommy, what's God's name? Mm. <laughs> and I remembered the words of my mother-in-law. Right. I've been in class ever since. Right. Right. That is... 
That's major to me. But I came in and I learned that the creator of heaven and earth has a name, and his name is Yahweh. Now, the first speaker told you that the Tetragrammaton, and you can look this up. Now, this is Hebrew right here. yod Hey wah Hey. That Yod is equivalent to our English Y, your, yellow. Now, what they have done over the years, they have tried to translate a name. You cannot do that. You have to transliterate it. So this Yod is our Y, makes the same sound. This He in Hebrew is our H, same sound, hello, hi. Yod, hey, why? Yod, hey, why, hey? So then you have this Y H W H, that wah, wah, wah. Nothing has changed. Let's get Exodus 3 um, 313. I want Acts 17 and 24. And then let's get Romans 119 and 20. So when you transliterate a name, you take it from one language and you move it over to the next language. Nothing changes. Right. Same meaning. Right. Nothing changes. So when this name was given to Moses, see, I learned all this coming down here to, to school. Moses was the first one to hear Yahweh's name. Let's get that real quick, please. Uh, you want yeah, let's just go right there. Moses said unto Yahweh, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say unto me, What is his name? Now Moses, he was down here in Egypt. This was a polytheistic society. They had a God for everything. We can see that over when um, Yahweh um, sent those plagues down there. I mean, it was frogs, locusts. They turned the water to blood. I mean, can you imagine frogs in your house, in your oven? I, I would have I died. <laughs> Boils. Now, they, they down here in Egypt, they were very meticulous and very, um, um, they, they, they loved how they looked. They breath always smelling good. The women beautiful, makeup, just be picture on the outside. Picture boils. They walking around with boils on. Oh, I would have died. Ain't no makeup to hide. Can't no makeup had that. <laughs> so Moses was down here. He was and he grew up in the um, household of Pharaoh. So they had all these customs and traditions down here. They had gods for everything. But they had names. So he said, he's having a conversation with Yahweh. He's at this burning bush. And he said, now, God, <laughs> come on now. Let's just, now look. Everything in the world has a name. Right. right. Everything. I don't care if you believe it or not. Everything that you see and don't see has a name. Right. You have a name. Yahweh is the name of the creator. His divine title is Elohim. The Savior's name is Yahshua. It was an impossibility for his name to be Jesus. Now, everything we say on this floor, we can prove it. See, we must prove all things. There was no letter J in the Hebrew, Greek, or Latin languages till today. My name wouldn't be April if it wasn't an A in the alphabet, English alphabet, my name wouldn't have been April, y'all. Now, my parents are good, but they ain't that good. <laughs> Seriously. So now he said, when I go down, you sending me back down here. I didn't kill the man. Now, you're telling me to go back down here. Now, when I go down here, what name am I going to give them? Now, he's telling Moses, go back down there. You're going to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. He said, now, when I go down there, what name am I going to say? He had to ask him that because it was God's now. He couldn't go down there and say, God sent me. He said, well, what God? Right. So, Fence, um, start, start that over for me, Dewan, please. 13. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, okay. and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you. Mm -hmm. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And, Yah, and Elohim said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Aya Asher Aya. And he said, 
Thus thou shalt say to the children of Israel. So he gave them a phrase. Aya, Asher, Aya. Mm -hmm. And your King James um, version is going to say, I am that I am. That is a mis Translation. mistranslation. Thank you. It's proper. I will be what I will to be. Now, Yahweh can be what he wills to be. Right. See, I am that I am. I just can't be nothing else. Right. Um, continue to read. Mm -hmm. Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be, have sent me unto you. Okay. And Elohim said, Moreover to Moses, mm -hmm. thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Okay. That Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Abraham of Isaac, and the Abraham of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. See, now he said, now this is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Not, not your generation, Moses, because he does say that a couple times in the Bible, your generation, your generation. But right here he said all generations. See, because, let's get Romans 1, 19 and 20. See, because when I was born, my parents named me April. I'm 40 years old. My name is still April. When I die, you're going to go out there and look at, try to find the tombstone. It's going to say April. It can't, it can't say nothing else. It just cannot say anything else. So now Yahweh made a creation to testify to him so you don't have an excuse. Don't we tell our kids that? I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to show you this. You ain't got no excuse not to know. Right. Romans 1, 19 and 20, please. Romans 1 and 19. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. See, now that which may be known of Yahweh. We was told, I was told that you couldn't know anything about God until, I, until you die. So scripture over there, I think Ecclesiastes 9 and 10, it talks about there's no knowledge in the grave. There's no knowledge in the grave. You can't learn nothing in that grave. So you can learn something about Yahweh now, like Yahweh is pure spirit. He has nine divine attributes. Wisdom, intelligent, not intelligent wisdom and knowledge. Love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. Those are his nine divine attributes. Now he took on a shape and form as Elohim. Made a creation by a threefold pattern. You're made by a threefold pattern. That's right. The cell is made, threefold pattern. He told the children of Israel to build this tabernacle in the wilderness threefold. Most holy place, holy place, court round about. He told the men to build three things, the temple, the tabernacle, and the ark. It was threefold. Fulfillment, prophecy, law, the Bible was made up of that. You have a gas, a liquid, and a solid. See, we can prove all things down here. Look at this chart right here. This is what he told the man to build, Moses to build out there in the wilderness. And everything that's in this tabernacle correlates to the things of your body. Everything. Finish reading that, please. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Then he came in the physical body, walked the earth plain as Yahshua, the Messiah. He came and he fulfilled this law, fulfilled everything that was written of him. Get Hebrews 10, where it says, uh, come in the volume of the book, finish that. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. See, these things are clearly seen, the invisible things of him. When I first understood that scripture, y'all, y'all couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> it's beautiful. See, he's invisible, but he made something that you can see with your physical eyes to say, oh, like a tree ain't, the, the tree's outside. I don't even look at the tree the same. 
because it's branching off as wise. Your hands, you see the wise in your hands, your arteries and your veins, look it up. Especially if you, if, if you look up the body and the, how the man makes the body, um, the colorful, you see red and blue with your arteries and they branch, the artists, they don't, the scientists don't know what they're doing, but Yahweh do. He made everything to testify to him. Right. How we walk, yeah. It's awesome. See, so that so we won't have an excuse. That sun rises and it sets every single day. And what is that talking about? The speaker brought that out last, last week. How the sun, and it's absolutely beautiful. Let me get this, this chart. I want to, okay. Now, now the true high priest is Yahshua the Messiah. Now he's the true son. So they, it, was a, it was a high priest in this tabernacle that officiated in this tabernacle. And you see the blue, purple, and scarlet veils. Now the greater and more tabernacle, the perfect and more, greater and perfect and more tabernacle or, uh, is the universe. He made a universe so we can look at him or see him. He's spirit. <laughs> so when that sun is rising, and especially when it's setting, don't you see the blue, purple, and scarlet in the sky? <laughs> It's that sun, that true sun going up and down, just like this high priest. He was going up and down this, this tabernacle. That high priest, Yahshua, going up and down that sun, the true sun. And it points to his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Well, how you know he died? Because the sun rises and it sets. It goes down. It goes down. Look at this. <laughs> You see that sun? You see the colors in the sky? So when the man was driven out, now this is the first man, Adam. Yahshua the Messiah is the second man, Adam. So when that sun was coming down, you see this sun coming down right here? That sun's coming down too. But the sun, what does it say? Um, the, the heavens declare the glory of El. So you don't have an excuse. See, he made, he made something that you can see right. so you can understand him. I, I just didn't, I never understood, I never heard that in church. Mm. What I have you holding? Hebrews 7. Let's get Hebrews. Hebrews 10 and 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Now we're talking about Yahshua the Messiah. Finish that, please. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Uh -huh. It is written of me to do thy will, O Yahweh. Above, when he said, sacrifice and offering, and burnt offerings, and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither has pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O Yahweh. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Right. This thing is beautiful. Now look, y'all. Now, I may be all over the place, but just hang in there with me. See, the first speaker laid a beautiful foundation. You pass the baton, the next speaker, then I'm going to pass it to the next speaker. Right. It's going to come together. Now, this story is about Yahshua. Right. That's right. It's about him. That's right. And like I said, everything he made testifies to that. So now it talks about a law. Now, this law... I didn't know nothing about this law. I was just in church doing whatever. This law was given to the Jew and the Jew only. Right. Let's get um, Romans 2.14. Romans 2 and 14. Uh -huh. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law. Okay, look, you say that again. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law. Okay. These having not the law are a law unto themselves. So now when Moses came down here, he told Pharaoh, let my, let, let my children go, talking about Yahweh. Yahweh devastated Egypt with, with um, the plagues, devastated them. He told the children of Israel to take out a lamb. Now, we got to understand that Yahshua the Messiah, he came in to fulfill everything that was written. He said, I was, it was written to me to do thy will. 
So they had, they had to take out a lamb. You see blood of the Paschal lamb. They had a basin that they put the blood of the lamb in. They had a bunch of hyssop. They dipped that hyssop in that blood. They struck the side post, the lintel. That's the four points of blood, okay? Talking about a lamb. Now, that's how they were able to resurrect, if you will, or come out of Egypt. Now, Yahweh came and he, Joshua came and fulfilled it. Now, when he died, now John said, behold, the, the lamb. <laughs> Talk, call, you don't call a man a lamb. He came in to fulfill. This was all pointing to Yahshua. Now, when he died, they pierced his hands. One, two. They didn't gently place the thorn, the crown of thorns on his head. It drew blood. One, two. They, they nailed him in his feet. One, two, three, four. And don't forget that. Don't forget they had to pierce him in the side, just like they did this lamb down here. But they were able to come up out of Egypt. And they, Moses told them to build this, this sanctuary down here so that I may worship. Let's get Exodus 25, eight. eight. I know my time almost up. So now this was, a, this was a tabernacle that the children of Israel and the children of Israel only, the Gentiles didn't have a law. Get Exodus, please. Exodus 25, eight. Okay. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. See, that I may dwell among them, okay? According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle. Pattern of the tabernacle, he's talking about Moses. Moses came up and he saw this vision. That's why he was able to write about the creation. He wasn't back there when Yahweh made it. First five books of the Bible was accredited to Moses. He saw it in a vision. It's like a rerun. The, the, the creation had already taken place. It's like a rerun. And he was just able to write exactly what he saw. Now the children of Israel was given a law that they had to do. The wages of sin was death. If you didn't offer up a sacrifice, you would die. Yahshua came and fulfilled it. He's the ultimate sacrifice. He died to take away the sin away. Right. The, the, um, the last scripture I had, he didn't have pleasure in this. He didn't have pleasure in this. And what we do, like when Felicia does the moderation, the drag on, he didn't drug all the stuff to the side. Mm -hmm. And that's why, that's where you get all these things that the churches are doing. Not knowing who had the law, not knowing the purpose of the Messiah, you do anything, like we did. I was once there, but this law was given to the children of Israel and the children of Israel only. Right. Now this was the Old Testament. Just get Jeremiah 31, 31. I was talking to um, a Jehovah's Witness and she told me that um, God's son came in and extended these things. Oh. That was the first time I heard that one. I said, wait a minute. Get Matthew 5, 17 right quick. Matthew's first? Yes. See, either you're going to believe the man or you're going to believe in Joshua. Now, he said, I come to fulfill. Right. Not extend. Right. He didn't say that. Let's read that for me. Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophet. Okay, now stop. See, everything has to be explained. He said, now think not that I come to destroy the law and the prophets. Now the law and the prophets, they're the, they're the witnesses to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, there's no light in them. There's no understanding in them. So you must go back. You got to go back. Over there in Luke, it talks about, uh, and beginning at Moses, he's talking about the law. So you got to understand, you don't start to open up that book in the middle. Who, who? You start from the beginning. But without a prophetic vision, you're just going to perish. That's why we always say that this product is the product of a divine vision right. and revelation. Divine means straight from Yahweh. 
What do I have you reading? Uh, that was Matthew. You also have okay. uh, Jeremiah. Read Jeremiah. So now this Old Testament, this is what this is. And I came down here and learned that it was 603 extra ones, making it 613. I'm talking about, look, they, the Jew, they had to do these things, and they had a tabernacle. They had to kill they sac that sacrifice. Whatever your sin was, you may have looked at your neighbor's wife or something, I don't know. You may have stolen something, I don't know. You come with your little turtle dove or whatever. You kill it, put it on this altar. It was a whole, it was a big deal. It was a big deal. <coughs> And we're trying to, you know, we, and this is, is not funny, but Yahshua came and fulfilled that. What you going to do for your salvation? Nothing. They talked about what's the work over there in John 6 and 29. He said, believe. Nothing to do. Just, 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 just believe. So this law, Yahweh came, Yahshua came and he fulfilled this law and moved it out of the way. So now it's a new law and it's written where? In your heart and in your mind. See, it was outside of, it was outside of the man. They couldn't, look, the first speaker told you that Yahweh declared the end from the beginning. He knew he was going to come in and offer himself up, move these things out of the way. So you can worship in your heart and in your mind. See, that, see that's, that's the reality. Read Jeremiah 31, 31. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Okay. Behold, the days come, say of Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant. So you should be asking some questions. What days? This is a school. What days? When he's offered up, when he died and when he's buried, and when he resurrects, outpours that Holy Spirit. And then seven years later, the Gentile was grafted right on in. Those days, continue. That I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. See, he's, I, I, told, I told her, I said, you got to understand that old and new. Right. It's two different things. That's right. It's two different things. Yahweh is pure intelligence. That's what he is. Now, why would he make the same law? Why would he, why would he do that? He said, John indeed baptized with water. Why would he say, I'm going to baptize you with water too? <coughs> Right. He said, I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. See, he's going to make a new covenant. Continue to read. And I'm going to say, Behold, the day shall come, Yahweh, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel mm -hmm. and with the house of Judah. Okay. Not according to the covenant that I made with your fathers. Okay. Not according. Not according to this covenant. Talking to the Jew, not according to this covenant that I made with your fathers. Remember, I told you they had a law, they had they had laws and ordinances and statutes right. and judgments they had to follow. See, and that's why it says, "Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh." A workman needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. They used to always quote that in the church. I, I can picture it. Picture it now. They, they, didn't, they didn't have no chart talking about dispensation and ages. See, they don't, they don't know where they at. That's why Dr. Kenley, in one of his transcripts said, you're ashamed if you don't know what age you're in. Right. That's when you're ashamed because you're doing something that's not even, see, we are in the spiritual <clears throat> kingdom on earth. Spiritual by is spirit. And this is the present kingdom age. It's a present, y'all. Mm -hmm. It's present. Come down here and learn by Yahweh. Continue reading. Not according to the covenant that I made with your fathers in the day that I took them by the hand. Okay. To bring them out of the land of Egypt. This is what he's talking about. The first speaker said a picture is worth a thousand. It's just, it's just beautiful. 
You mean to tell me I can look, this is the Bible in pictorial form, come up here and look at this, grab a scripture and, and just look and just, it's worth a thousand words. Took them out, out of Egypt by the hand. We, we learned so much down here. Now Joshua was down here with them. He was Moses' minister. They didn't know that that was Yahweh in the body. They didn't know that was Yahshua the Messiah. Get, uh, I know my time is almost up. Get um, Joshua, the 24th chapter. Hope I'm not all over the place. I hope y'all get me. We don't have any first time visitors, so I'm good. But Yahshua, see it was no J. They couldn't call him Yahshua. They couldn't call him Joshua. They darn sure couldn't say Jesus. Right. See, Lord, English, God is German, Krishna, Hindu, Jesus, Greek. Yahshua said, I am come in my father's name. My last name, Atkins. How much I want to bet my dad's last name is Atkins. Romans 1, 19 and 20. We don't have no excuse. What I have you holding? Finish that Dewan. Finish that Dewan. Joshua 24. Yeah, but what would you read? And I would. Yep, uh, Jeremiah 31. Yeah. After those days, said Yahweh, will put my law in their inward parts. Right. And write in their hearts, and will be their own, and they shall be my. See, people. now he gonna write it in you. Before it was written in stone, and it talks about that. The New Testament not written in pen and ink. It ain't written on no stone. It's written in you. See, it's, 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 hmm. Once you, my dad said to me last week, a couple weeks ago, knowing something about Yahweh makes everything, you can understand it. You can just, it's easier. Understanding something about your creator, everything makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. And it does. So he's going to write the new law in you. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was down here. Yahshua. <laughs> so you couldn't, and people always say, well, what about Jerusalem? What about jo Johan? Jerusalem? Didn't Jimmy Carter go to Jerusalem? What they call him? Yimmy. They couldn't say Jimmy. <laughs> they just couldn't say that. And like I said, names don't change. He said, it's my name forever. Like, your name is forever. Um, so, yes, Joshua was down here. Joshua, the son of Nun. He was doing all of that. It was by the hand of Moses, but he was doing all of that. And so that was another conversation that me and the Jehovah's Witnesses had because they talk about how 144,000 is going to be in the earth, the physical earth, after, oh, it's just, it just, it make, um, it doesn't make any sense no. at all. But the earth class would be 144. Now, he gave a promise to Abraham, and he said it's going to be an innumerable. Now, this 144,000, now, Joshua, let me tell you something, 603,550 came up out of Egypt. Yeah, Men. <laughs> Not including the, the, you know, they mamas. <laughs> they sisters, the babies, it was it was a ton of them. Came up out of Egypt. Now that old, the old, they died off. All of them that came from out of Egypt, they died off. It was four, Caleb, Eleazar, Phineas, and Joshua. We know that was Joshua the Messiah. Now he took them over to Canaan land. <laughs> Took them over to Canaan land. It was 144,000 of them that went on over. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses, now it's millions of y'all. Now, y'all fighting for that 144,000. <laughs> y'all fighting. It's millions of y'all. How y'all gonna do that? Over there in, in, in First Corinthians, it talks about how flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom. So they ain't even gonna be there. If you talking about it's going to be a physical earth, flesh and blood don't inherit the kingdom. The 
the, the kingdom, you can't even see the kingdom with observation. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. So if you read in that Bible literal with a carnal mind, what it talks about a carnal mind is that enmity with Yahweh. Pure hatred, total opposition. So Joshua, who was Yahshua the Messiah, took them over to the promised land or to Canaan land that was already promised to them. Now who gonna take you over? Who, who was the only one that can take you over? He had it. That's the only one that can take, that's the only one that can take you to the promised land. Just like he took them to the promised land. See these things, these physical things are shown to us so we can understand something spiritual. Read Joshua 21 for me. Joshua 24, 24. and 1. Mm -hmm. And Joshua said unto the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads mm -hmm. and for their judges and for their officers. And they presented themselves before Yahweh. <laughs> and Joshua said unto all the people, mm -hmm. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel. Okay. Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, so even now, to Rob. Right. So Joshua, he gathered all the heads, all the tribes, and they presented themselves before who? Yahweh. <clears throat> so now we came in here, I came in here, and I learned that these three are one. Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. See, everything goes by a threefold pattern. This tabernacle, most holy place, holy place, court roundabout. The man, you have a head cavity, a chest cavity, a abdominal region. These three are one. It was some tribes, the tribes that was around here. You know, because people say, well, yeah, three, one, okay, your body, all that, but what about your arms? Your arm is three parts to your arms, your legs. First speaker talked about how nobody has ever been able to dispute this gospel. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> and they won't, because why? Because it's divine. Yahweh gave us this vision to Dr. Kenley. He opened up all of the mysteries, all of them. And it's a privilege to know something about your creator. It's an absolute privilege. Let's get Colossians 124, I'll be down. Colossians 1. 24? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. 1 and 24. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you? Okay. And fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of the Messiah mm -hmm. in my flesh for the body's sake, which is the assembly. Okay, let's stop right there. Okay, talks about, um, oh man, I won't have time. Maybe the next speaker can get it. The scripture lesson was beautiful, and it talks about members of that body. Now, if one of your members on your body not working, you're going to feel it. My potassium levels dropped two, two, about two weeks ago. I thought it was over for me. Could, could barely talk. I had to go to ER. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Something is going on in your body. Go to the doctor. My dad said, you can't fix yourself, baby. Go. And I went. If something is going on with one, of your, one member, if you stub your toe, if you bump your head on the cupboard, you're going to feel that. But we make up the body of Yahshua, and we need each other. Continue reading. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you? and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of the Messiah in my flesh okay. for his body's sake, mm -hmm. which is the assembly, mm -hmm. whereof I am made a minister mm -hmm. according to the dispensation of Yahweh, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of Yahweh. Okay. Even the mystery, which have been hid from ages and from generations, mm -hmm. but now is made manifest to his sons, right. to whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of his glory, of the, of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is the Messiah in you, 
the only hope of glory. I learned that coming down here, y'all. That's our only hope, and he's in you. He's not outside of you. He's right in you. That's a mystery to the world. But we know that and we understand that Yahweh, Yahshua is in us. That's what causes us to walk straight. That's what causes us to understand anything. It's not because April thinks she's so smart. I don't. You know, it's from the grace and the mercy of Yahweh that causes us to be down here, causes us to meet, you know. But that's a mystery that he revealed to the sons. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just beautiful. And I'm so happy to be here today. If you got anything from that, hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. We really enjoyed that. And I failed to uh, recognize we have um, returning brethren. Uh, we have Dr. We have Brother Asante Alexander. It's good to see you. I don't know when you grew up, but we won't talk about that right now. And then we have uh, Sophia Baird, my little sister, the youngest of us, who I am um, very glad that Yahweh has her here today um, because we know that this is not my thing. It's not Felicia's thing that she does. It's not Ayana's thing that she does. Yahweh's this is Yahweh's thing. And we know, and our, uh, the first speaker talked about it, that he said his remaining times on this earth. So if there's one thing we all know, we coming out of here, either individually or collectively, but you're going to leave here. So you need to be prepared. And this is what this class does. It prepares you for that inheritance that we are all guaranteed. Um, so before I announce our next speaker, we will have a, a business meeting directly after class today, after the, I'm sorry, after the doxology is done. Uh, it won't go in until, I'm sorry. It'll be brief. It'll be brief. Thank you, Dr. Ewell. Can't find my words today. It'll be brief, so we're asking all the members of the Southfield class after the doxology is recited to please remain seated so that we can get through it. Yes. Yeah, and the guest, if you're a guest, you don't have to stay. Okay. And for our next speaker, we're happy to have Dr. Dorian Lewis. I don't know if you guys noticed when April said Caleb, he responded. <laughs> said Caleb Eliezer. He said, yeah, Caleb. <laughs> he see, he knows his name as we should know our creator's name. Well, you know what? You do what you see. I, I treat him so bad. No, I'm glad to, I'm glad to be here and I've enjoyed class. I don't think that I'm going to be that long. Um, but the previous speakers laid a, a good foundation. They left, they, um, and it gave you so many ways to, work, to go that I'm kind of uh, overwhelmed. I don't know which way to go. But um, I do want to give a reasonable testimony, and I want to testify to the things that Yahweh has shown, has revealed to me. And uh, I have of lately been feeling the, the awesomeness of this responsibility that he's put before all of us. When Yahweh gives you or shows you something, you have a responsibility to use that, and uh, I, I'm just, uh, it is an awesome responsibility. We want to take it seriously and preach this gospel as uh, the previous speakers both just did and go up here and preach this gospel. They talked about the purpose of Yahweh. I'm not going to really try to break, bite off all of that, but is that what is common in the religious world, and you can see it if you read about any, I don't care what doctrine it is, Christian, Muslim, uh, Jewish, all the thousands of others. One thing that they all kind of, uh, the way that they treat it is that this creator or creators, as she talked about in Egypt, how they were uh, a polytheistic society. We were reading in the textbook about, um, not Islam, but uh, Hinduism, how they have many gods in Hinduism and things like that. So whatever their system of belief is, one thing they all seem to believe, and anyone that I've studied, 
is that this creator or, or creators kind of set this all up and then stood back and watched. What y'all gonna do? Left us to our own devices to figure it out. Left us to our own devices to make it up as we see fit and what works for us. And what we come to learn. Now, get me, um, I, have, uh, I am Yahweh, that is, I am Yahweh. I have purposed it and all of that. You know, get that for me. I can't think of nothing when we get up here. Because this is what the, pre what the previous speakers talked about, brought to my mind. And I'm, go I'm going to leave time for another speaker. Yahweh, um, we go ahead. Yes, Isaiah 46 and 9. Uh -huh. Remember the former things of old, mm -hmm. for I am Yahweh, mm -hmm. and there is none else. Right. I am Yahweh, and there is none like me. Right. Declaring the end from the beginning mm -hmm. and from ancient times. The things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, mm -hmm. and I will do all my pleasure. Right. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, mm -hmm. the man that executeth my counsel from a far country. Mm -hmm. Yea, I have spoken it. Right. I will also bring it to pass. Right. I have purposed it. Mm -hmm. I will also do it. So now this creator, this guy, in your King James Version of the Bible, it says the Lord. He is saying this. Speaking through the prophet Isaiah, he said, what, it, what he purposed, he's going to do it. You understand? Not might. Not wait on you to help out. You understand what I'm saying? When Paul talks about the creature being made subject to vanity, that is the honest truth. The, the hubris and arrogance of mankind to think that you somehow are going to help God, who created the stellar universe. You can't barely get, you know, get to work on time. You understand what I'm saying? But we're going to help him carry out his purpose. So I'll tell you, and I've said this before, a lot of things that whatever it is, and we're not picking on, on religions, on um, ideologies, but you do have to face facts. And what we look for down in this school, we hope that you are an honest-hearted truth seeker, that you want to know the truth. And I, I understand that. I'm, I'm, so many things have been on my mind. I understand that sometimes, because that's how the world is, we look at people and we judge people and ideologies and groups. That's the, you hear that a lot now with these people talking about the state of the world from a physical standpoint. They're talking about um, tribalism, how that's on the rise. Everybody's picking a team. Mm -hmm. You understand what team you are politically, race-wise, religion-wise, everybody's, and you're going to, just like Lions fans, no matter how bad it is, you're going to remain a fan because that's your team and you're supposed to do that, right? I know I can't say that now because they're a little bit better, but you see what I'm saying? No matter what problems you see, I'm a Baptist. I, don't, I can't explain this. I don't like this, but I'm going to do that. You understand? And what I want to say is that that's not what this is. Don't, it ain't about us. And not one person in here is perfect. But the doctrine, the doctrine, test that out and put it, you know, put it to the test and see what you can do with that. We're not talking about joining no organizations. I ain't even going to go into that. But this is not about, look at this little rinky dink rented room. You understand? What are we doing here? We're coming to learn something about the creator. You understand? Why? I think about that often. Why? You understand? We want to know about our creator as he really is and actually exists because it will do something for you individually. You understand? To understand Yahweh's purpose and you understand what Yahweh's doing. So anyway, he said when he, he said he will purpose and he will also do it. So in this school, we teach, the previous speakers mentioned it, that Yahweh has a purpose. So she talked about quickly all the misconceptions that are in the world. And that's why we talk about those things, because you know there are things that you couldn't answer in whatever previous affiliation you were in. Why did uh, God put them in the Adam and Eve in the garden and then tell them don't eat the tree, don't eat the fruit of the tree? Well, you see, and then, you know, all these different questions, all these different things we can't answer. You understand? Why did God allow the Israelites to be enslaved if they were his people? Why does God allow all these terrible things in, in the world to happen? So he can't explain it. You see what I'm saying? But what not understanding that Yahweh has a purpose, as he read, as he just read in Isaiah. He said, I will purpose and I will also do it. He has a particular purpose and he has a pattern and a plan of salvation. And nothing will impede that. Do you understand? So we come into school to learn about that. Now they talked about the purpose of Yahweh. I want to talk a little bit about this pattern. They also talked about that. Because what this pattern will allow you to do, a pattern sets up a precedent. 
you understand? We can look it up. I, for, I meant to do this because I kind of forgot, but look up the word, the etymology of pattern. Get that real quick. I'm just trying to set up some of the things that we teach in the school and why they're important. Because they may not seem, it's, it's a lot to learn, especially if you're coming from the world and you may be like, man, that, well, what about this? What, 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 coming from the world, sometimes, listen to this, you may not understand what benefit it will be for you to learn these things. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's not like we have a church that's here now that meets in the same building. They're here when, before we start. Right. So I was listening to them this morning as I was helping setting up. And, and, and uh, just the things that they're, they're, they're giving emotional support to people, that's, a, that's essentially what it is. You know, you're going to be okay. God is with you, that kind of thing. Right. You understand? So that's what people expect. They want, like, what is it doing for me? You and your previous affiliations heard that God, you and your previous affiliations heard that God has a pattern. We heard about God's purpose. What's God's purpose for my life? What's God's purpose for your state? Took on a shape and a state. Took on a shape and a form. Father manifested in the flesh. What do y'all uh, the the uh, seventy elders and Aaron and Nadab uh, the the uh, seventy elders and Aaron and Nadab saw. That's who Moses witnessed in this burning bush. That's who John saw on the Isle of Patmos. That's very creation is telling you something about your creation. We about your creator and we ignore it. Very creation is telling you something about your creation. We about your creator and we ignore it. As the Holy Spirit, exactly as He promised, yeah. turn people off. Yeah. Yeah. Turn people off. Yeah. You understand? Because they're judging the gospel. I don't care what you think about me. Yeah. Anybody know that I do? Foreign people. You know what I'm saying? Not just my culture. I deal with a lot of different cultures. I want to wreck. You know, you're going to tell me that that high priest robed and turned white <laughs> because that's what I was taught. And you telling me the truth. Don't nobody know the difference. Outside looking in, because they don't know. They All they see is an argument. He said the shekin I flash. He said the robe turned white. Ignorance. You know, and it, I mean, it even goes deeper to where, okay, I look into the scientific things. And they know about the atom. Where we at? Right here. Ain't that's the atom? Yep. The, the protron, neutron, electron. So they did a, a thing where they studied into the proton that's inside the atom. They want to know, because you know it's so small, like, it's like right there in the middle of it, you know. And so they take this glass box and they set it on the table and they talk about space. You know, what occupies space? Like, it's space between me and you, but what's occupying that space in between me and you? You know, they went so deep to the point where they got it to where they know and they, they don't understand it still, but that proton, and, okay, and then they, they would, if you know anything about quantum physics, y'all know about our physics, regular physics. They try to combine them and see what's really going on, you know what I'm saying? So they went so deep as to look into, you know, so microscopic that they could show it on the screen that somehow you see these, they, so they use a black circle and a white circle. And they come, they, they come out of nowhere. They just happen, disappear, happen. And it, it keeps spreading throughout the whole box. Like, so they know that that space in between me and you is occupied. It's occupied with something. This a class. This a school. That space is occupied by what? Spirit law. So then I, I'll go in there and say, and talk to somebody like that. And they, oh, young man, this young man intelligent. Boy, where you study that? <laughs> Y'all heard of the IDMR? Nah. Uh, what y'all studied on that? I said, you, you heard of metaphysical research? Smart as they is. No, what is metaphysical research? <laughs> I mean, brother, you know how to go and look into a neutron, an atom. But you don't know what metaphysical is? Give me a day. I'm going to go look it up. <laughs> That's what you hear. He come back because he's going to go research it himself. You know, we're having, and like the, those, all the previous speakers was talking about, you know, you, you got to have a start somewhere. That's what I got from the, now I have, I was talking to a person and I was, know that this, this individual 
know about the Bible. Into church so much, family um, got their own church. Now, I started talking about Adam and Eve in the garden, how Adam wasn't, dece wasn't deceived by Eve, how the world put it, right? I ain't going to go into it, but, cause, but we know about that. So I went into it with, with this person, this individual. And the individual got offended. Somewhere within there say, you got to know your audience. And I, I said, I thought about that for like a couple days. I'm talking about for real. I'm at work looking at people different like, she right. She was actually right. You do got to know your audience. You know, you give them time to say something and talk. So I was able to come back and say, well, I had time to think about that. Like, you is right. I, I can, yes, you are. But what is one of the main things that you feel like, I don't know, that you know? Well, tell me something I don't know. That's the response, right? Tell me something I don't know. Anybody in this religion world, and this is for a class that can, it can help you out, because Dr. Kinley admonished this. Try as quick as you can to get to this pattern when you're talking to anybody. This pattern. And that brother over there, Dorian, that's my man. Nah, that's, he like a brother. Nah, he the physical brother that I never really had. I want it. Just Joshua's like, he can give him to me. But it's cool, though. He older than me, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> but this pattern, you know, and I had some visit. My uh, cousin was visiting from out of town, and I got this one cousin. He go deep. He he just think he's a philosopher. Say say the same thing. Yeah. What what? Well, we don't know about that. Tell us. I said, you know, you have you heard about the tabernacle pattern? No. Nope. <laughs> Everything changed. You no. Know? And from my wife's mother got a, had a picture uh, of the tabernacle pattern drawing. It was from back in like the, the 70s or some early, I don't know, late 70s, something like that. And that, that, I got that in my house. Just so happened, look, I could break it out and show them, tell them. This is my measuring rod mm -hmm. to everything that you think you know and think you're talking about. Uh, what you mean by that? This pattern, Moses was, went up in that mount, and he was instructed to come down and build this tabernacle pattern. And I tell him, it's some over 40 some chapters in the Bible, boy. You don't hear no church out here. You hear about the tabernacle church on the, on the corner. But go in that tabernacle church on the corner and ask him, why do y'all name this the tabernacle church? Why you go, we'll go in there and you wouldn't hear nothing about, about this tabernacle pattern. Right. So I try to go back on them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know the story when Moses came out of Egypt. And see, that's when I got the attention. Because it's like, nah, I am telling you something you don't know. Why you think you're so smart in everything that we talk about with the elementary chart. Everything that we talk about in the world, events, and the gospel, and the religions, and all this stuff. You ain't think it had a beginning, a start, a start to it. The, Moses came down here and built this tabernacle pattern. It's 12 tribes camped out around this tabernacle pattern. I told them about how... With that cloud move, they had to take that tabernacle pattern and move it. To go further with them, I tell them about the pattern. I say, well, look at your own body. You got a head cavity, a chest cavity, and a dominal region. They stunned. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking about, like, I want to laugh. Sometimes I want to laugh so bad. But I think after that, it'll be, like, stupid. You know, no, you don't want to offend nobody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then... Why is it 12 tribes? Right. Then they break, I break it down. Look, a little bit more. Look. Look at your arm. You got a hand, you got a lower, forearm arm and upper arm on both sides. Tell mm -hmm. so my cousin, add that up. I know there's six, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about the other six that you got down there? Talking about, man, yeah, your foot, your cabin, your thigh. 
what they add up to, 12. I'm talking about blowing their mind with that. Just little stuff like that, like which I heard these speakers go over today. It's, it's kind of like music. When I was in, used to be in music class, they do re me fa so li ti do baby. Over and over and over and over again, over and over and over again, until you get it perfect. <laughs> you in there like, why I got to do this again? Why I got to, you know, go home and tell mama, they keep doing, I used to play the violin. They, I used to be like, oh my God, we got to play uh, taps again? <laughs> Many times we gonna play this song, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, not knowing that it was increasing my knowledge on how to do it. I went from that to playing the trumpet. I haven't played the trumpet in years, but I bet I could pick that trumpet up and still play it with what I remember from the repetition that I've learned from doing it. Learning repetitiously. And I would tell them that's why I pulled that picture out, because I was able to show you also that this is what you look at. So now it's like, now, yeah, the, the other person, yeah, now I could go back and talk to you about Adam in the garden and show you, like the previous speaker was saying, blood, water, spirit principle, according to the pattern, the blood, water, spirit principle, the death, burial, and resurrection principle. It's like 13 other plates on this chart. Look at them like, y'all got a long way to go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And if it's permit, if I got the time to do it, I don't got no problem with going with you over it. But it can't keep on being no big old debate. Uh, yeah, this is what my preacher said. This is what I thought. I tell them, go talk to your preacher. Tell them what I said. Invite me to the church. I come. But I bet you money that he wouldn't put me after, he, after talking to me in the back and thinking that he going to put me in front of his people, his congregation. You're right, sister. Escort me right out the church. Come on, brother. Mm -mm. That brother don't belong here. You know? And we know who that is, putting us out there, that's that old boy, you know. But, I mean, I, like, I am, I'm so, like, floored. I'm happy to be here. I am so happy that Yahshua worked with me the way he worked with me, the things that he showed me in my life. You know what I'm saying? It didn't take my wife, it didn't take Keisha to bring me to class. You know, it took... Yahshua would open up my understanding in my heart, in my mind, in my ear, you know, right. to it. And so I embrace it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. They say, how you survive? I talk to so many people and I tell them this. Blood, water, spirit. <laughs> death, burial, resurrection. How you think I dealt with all that? Because I understand. I ain't got to be out here hurt, walking around, ready to hurt somebody else. I ain't got to be mad at the world. I ain't got to say, forget my brother, and I ain't going to class. You know, excuse me, Lord, I don't mess with you no more. How stupid am I? The previous speaker, when April was up here, she talked about, yes, we make up the body of Joshua. Right. Somebody in this room got more wisdom than somebody else. Somebody got more intelligence than somebody else. Somebody got more knowledge than somebody else. Somebody have more love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength than somebody else in the body. Your arms and your legs, they seem similar, but you stand on these every day. Can you imagine standing on these all day, every day? If it was made that way, that's how it would be. But it ain't. Spirit law. We know that Yahshua is the teacher. Whatever it is that's in you that Yahshua put in you, keep in you for yourself. When you go out here believing what the world's saying, you listening to your friends, and you listen to somebody because you think they smart, or you think they, you know, upper echelon higher than you and what you Please. I tell people, 
and I don't care how far I go in business or in this business world, I'm going to still be the same. I'm going to talk the same. I'm going to act the same. Ain't nothing about me going to change. Now, you got to deal with it. You got to see it. Because it ain't hurtful. It ain't hurting. I ain't trying to hurt nobody. It's just if you want to be around me and you want to talk about something real, be able to refer to the gospel. Because everything you say about what went on with such and such and so and so, I don't care. I know why it's going on. And I know where it's going to lead. So I'm going to stay neutral. I got to stay steadfast in the gospel. What did Joshua tell me? What did Joshua show me? You know what I'm saying? Whatever part of the body that it is for me to be, then that's the part of the body that I'd rather be. Harold ain't trying to take your place. You know, I ain't got to be two fingers named Harold, Harold and Harold. You know what I'm saying? You could call Dean Harold, something I don't care. One of my friends told me, oh, I got all these best friends, and oh, Carl, he was number seven. I said, well, I was number seven. <laughs> I'm number seven. <laughs> I'm a fight for one, huh? Like I care. I think that's where me and Dorian really like click. Because I don't care. You know, anybody know me? Pfft, whatever, man, I do me. You know what I'm saying? I could do me better than anybody out here can think they can. You know, <laughs> but I want to thank Yahshua. Look, he got this for us. Let's utilize it. You know? Sometimes in class, I might think, look, I don't want to raise my hand. No. Uh-uh, all they got to stop. So any one of y'all up here talking, somebody talk about this gospel, if I got a question or anything, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to raise my right. hand. I'm going to give my opinion. It's a class. We got to start operating like that. We got to start operating when somebody say, oh, when we on Zoom, I ain't got it. Somebody can help me. Everybody busy, you're busy, busy. You know, and I'll be at work, I'll be like, oh, man, I, be, I just want to throw the pots and pans to the side and be like, let me answer that or let me refer to that. Right, right, right. You know, the participation of it, you know, is, is, is for us edifying, edifying for the body. You know, and thank you for letting me come up here, even Joshua, for even speaking on it. Because I was watching him when I was coming here in April. I, that baby, you take care of that baby. My baby was 14 when I lost you know, and I talked to her about that, and she said, I know the name is Joshua. And I'm saying my heart was just, thank you, Joshua. You know, right on. <laughs> thank you, brother, and praise Joshua. Thank you, Dr. Leatherberry. We enjoy that just. One thing, don't do opinions down here. We do what thus saith Yahweh. That's it. Um, that does bring a conclusion to our lecture for today. We are very thankful that you were allowed to join us. We ask once again the Southfield Brethren to remain seated after the doxology for our business meeting. We hold classes on Zoom every Tuesday and Thursday from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and on Sundays from 11 to 1. The next two Sundays will be on Zoom. We will not be meeting in person because this location will be closed. So once again, we'll be on Zoom for the next two weeks, uh, specifically on Zoom. May we all stand to be dismissed. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present your soul faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power before all time, now and forever. Let us all say hallelujah. hallelujah. Please remain seated so we can do the business meeting. Now, folks, listen. Yahweh is all that 
see? Now, while you're arguing around about this and that and the other and Moses and Joshua and all them kind of all these kind of things, you see? Yahweh is all that does exist. Mm. You want to get the argument set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, look. Yahweh is pure spirit. That's Yahweh. Now that's the Bible. That's the ultimate source. That's the source. That's the limits. That's the boundaries. That's the sum total. That's it. Add it up. Now, Yahweh took on an incorporeal form. See? Let's call that his Lord. But it's still Yahweh. Yeah, right. See? Then Yahweh, see, created the heavens and earth, or Eloah. See. Now, a Lord is a title. God is a title. See? Now, you listen to what I'm saying. Get these words straight together. And I hope you're benefited by what I'm saying to you. Now, he's all of the substance he did. There isn't anything else. Well, somebody said, well, where did he come from? So you get too damn stupid. Do you understand what I'm telling you? That he's the ultimate source and emanated everything. And if you understood what I'm talking about, you wouldn't be asking no food questions like that. Am I getting somewhere? Yes. <laughs> Now listen, now he comes on down here in the person of Joshua. See? That's still Yahweh manifested in a physical body. Right. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I want to make myself clear. All this jib jabbing and fooling around and squabbling around about first one thing and another. You know say, it's talking about what you believe and what you don't believe. What is the reason why you don't know? You don't know nothing about it. That's right. You say, well, why don't you know something about it? Because I have nobody to tell you. Right. 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 Then every time somebody tries to tell you something, that Yahweh has sent. Right. Right. You know what you do then? Persecute him and put him to death. Right. Right. But you did that the last time. <laughs> <laughs> that that's all they told us. <laughs> See? Now listen. Yahshua the Messiah, whom you call Jesus, those of you that don't know no better, of course that's not his name. See, let me tell you who that was. Now that was Yahweh manifested in a physical body. You understand that? Yes. 